Hi, my name is Fiorella Triscritti. I am a political affairs officer at the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs uh, in New York. Hi, my name is Omar Hernandez. I'm a public information officer at the UN Academic Impact Department of Global Communications. I was a UNB in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, from 2008 until 2010. Um, I joined the United Nations Operation in Cote d'Ivoire, UNOSI, uh, as an electoral advisor. Yes, uh, back in 2017, I was a volunteer and conference management specialist, uh, working with the UNFCCC, with the U which is the UN Climate Change Secretariat headquartered in Bonn, Germany. Um, applying to become UMV was a very straightforward process. Um, I applied online, submitting all the information, and actually, I, I believe within a couple of weeks, I got an email requesting uh, further information about my availability for an assignment in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and I answered that I was ready to go, that I had the requirements, that I was excited about the opportunity. And I think within, again, another few weeks, uh, I was contacted um, by the mission, um, again requesting my availability, and then a few weeks later an interview took place, um, and that was it. So I think it took in total about two, three months to be deployed. It was very quick. So I was based in a, a duty station uh, far away from the capital. And my day-to-day -day task was to monitor and interact with our counterparts, um, in this case, the Electoral Commission in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I basically, part of my day was to get to, the, to office and reach out to our partners, um, read online what was going on and draft reports as needed. And the other part was sometimes to go uh, physically uh, driving, sometimes a couple of hours in the middle of the jungle, to meet with the local partners and discuss with them what was going on and what kind of support they needed from the UN. Um, actually, I had the same routine as uh, probably the rest of the staff of UNSCCC. I was in charge mostly of the recruitment, selection, training, supervision of volunteers for the UN Climate Change Conference that happened in Bonn in 2017. Uh, we are talking about probably between 800 and 900 students and professionals that volunteer for the conference. So during the first months, the main task was to promote this volunteer initiative and then to revise the applications and they were received. Uh, I was part of a team and we received all together almost 10,000 applications from different parts of the world, so we narrowed that, um, reviewing and revising every single application, and then we allocate the best candidates for the various tasks during the conference, and then in particular myself, I was in charge of leading the team who was in charge, uh, again, of the training and uh, the awareness uh, section and component of the pre-volunteer task uh, for, the, for the conference and then for the actual supervision of a cluster of over 100 people uh, during the event, which uh, to this date has been the largest UN conference in history, um, attracting more than 30,000 participants, which is why they needed a large number of volunteers and this, which is why they hired me and us to guide and lead this process. And the most, the most fulfilling part of my job was uh, to um, feel that I was really helping out. Feel, I, I felt proud that um, I was able to uh, learn from them and also to share my, my knowledge about how uh, we could uh, support the local authorities to have you know, credible, peaceful elections. And that was a fundamental um, moment in the life of the country. And, and it felt really great to be part of that specific you know, moment in the history of the country. Um, in terms of challenge, um, I think the most challenging part was the fact that this was really my first experience in Sub-Saharan Africa. 
I had never worked there. I, I felt really out of place. Um, and, and you know, working in a diverse environment is challenging. It's rewarding, but it's also very challenging. Uh, the most fulfilling part is the fact that at the end of the conference, both the beneficiaries of the volunteers, which were the UN system itself, and the organizers of the conference were very pleased with the work of the volunteers, and they, they were very pleased with how engaged the volunteers were. And this was thanks in part to my, my work as UNB, but also the satisfaction in, in the volunteers themselves who felt that they were properly trained and they loved the experience and they loved the fact that I was seriously engaged and in, I, I, I deeply care about their needs and, um, and their work. So that was the best part of it. Um, the most challenging part was to, because I was part of a team and we were all 10 people from 10 different countries, so to combine um, the different work styles of everybody was difficult and also to handle stress during this massive and large conference was also uh, quite difficult as well. But in the end, it, it was all worth it and, um, and the results uh, speak for themselves. Normally when you volunteer uh, with an organization, they only require your will to, or your willingness to, uh, to volunteer. But in the case of UMB, it's a little bit more complicated because of the type of volunteer positions they offer and the kind of work that you're going to do. So most likely they demand from you either an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree. You have to know at least two languages. Uh, so uh, the requirements are a little bit more strict because they, the host agency, which is the UN entity that will actually recruit you, uh, you are going to be part of their staff. Although you are going to be a UNV, you are going to fulfill pretty much the same functions of a regular staff, although for very specific issues and projects, uh, which is why the requirements are very competitive and the process is very competitive as well. I think that my time as a UNV was crucial to prepare me for my current career. Um, I had actually heard about the UNV opportunity while I was interning at the United Nations. And what everybody had told me is that if you want to be in this field, you need to have field experience. Like you really need to go to, to, to the field. And the UNV program was appeared to be excellent um, to give me that trampoline. And so I think it was very important. Um, when I applied then for an actual position as a professional in the United System, I understand that uh, those recruiting were looking at the field experience. I believe if, if you become a UNV, this is a perfect opportunity not only to volunteer your time and knowledge, but also to learn about the UN. So anyone who is interested in a career with the UN, once you are a UNV, you understand the organization, you understand the procedures, you understand the mechanism, you understand how the UN works from the inside, from within. And this, of course, is a knowledge that you are not going to get in a training or an, in, a, in, the, uh, in through formal education. This is something that you get by actually doing it. So UNV offers you the opportunity of performing and conducting an actual UN job from a different approach or perspective. And this, of course, is the best preparation you can, you can possibly have to become part of the UN then as an employee or staff. Um, so, I, so my educational background is in economics and political and social sciences. Um, and I, when I was uh, finishing my master degrees in economics, I decided to join a PhD program not because I wanted to become a teacher, but because I really wanted to work in an international organization. But I felt that I was too young to do so, and therefore I started a PhD program. <laughs> um, and this is what I did. I did a four-year PhD program, and while I was finishing, I started to become interested in the United Nations. I applied for the internship, and that's where I found out about the UNV program, and that's how everything started, really. Well, I got my bachelor's degree in Venezuela in international studies, and then I did a diploma of, of advanced studies in freedom of expression and right to information, which was mostly related to international human rights law. 
and then I did a master's degree in Spain um, in cooperation for development with specialization in international humanitarian assistance. And I have done various trainings on international human rights law, international public law, international humanitarian law, um, mostly related to the UN as well as, as on peacekeeping operations. And I worked, aside from the UN, at the university teaching international public law and international journalism. And I worked for uh, almost five years as an international news analyst and editor in a newspaper uh, in my home country. So I think that I would attribute my current position to several factors. Um, the first one is, of course, the academic training and background. The second one is the knowledge of languages. Um, and the third one is, you know, some of the field experience and the fact that I think I have a personality that really adapts quickly um, to what I'm, you know, like I, I pick it up quickly. And so I think I was able to adapt to the different offices that it worked so far. I was able to work well with people. I was able to establish good peer-to-peer -peer relationship. And at the end of the day, I think people appreciate when they, they, they work with someone that they can relate to and they feel you know comfortable with. I think that aside from my educational or professional background, uh, people can know that I, I deeply have a passion towards multilateralism and the role of the UN I have and since since I was a kid I always wanted to work uh, at the UN and with the UN uh, probably since I was nine years old or probably even younger so people can can tell that people can tell that how I have related all my studies and all my work experiences with the UN in some way or, or another and this passion probably is one of the main reasons why uh, they chose me and the reason why I'm here. Um, I believe that, so the advice that I would offer to a young professional is, is that I think it's very hard. It's so hard these days, there are less opportunities and there are more excellent, talented young professionals. So it's difficult to think of how you can stand out. Um, but at the same time, I think you, you need to show that you really want to. You need to focus on a specific path and, and try your best. And if you don't succeed, don't take it personally. Don't, don't be miserable and just say, okay, you know, this didn't go, let me try again. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's perseverance that will get you where you want. I would say the two most important things will be languages. Uh, try to learn as many languages as possible because it is one of the most important things that you have to have in order to work at and with the UN. The second most important thing I would say to choose a specific field of expertise or a professional uh, field because most people, for example, like international religious of the, or the UN as a, as a general picture, but then you actually need to specialize yourself in something and that will allow you to focus more your career, your graduate studies, and the kind of job placements that you would like to pursue here in the UN system, in any of the UN entities and organizations.